Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this session on uh, the gas trading outlook in, in Southeast Europe. Um, before we begin with the first speaker, I'd just like to make um, three comments. Um, the first one is around, uh, which, are, which I think set the scene, the set the context for this, this session, and I hope, I hope fairly well. First comment is around the, um, uh, the very dramatic uh, uh, improvement in diversity of supply into this region in the last um, two years. We've seen uh, more LNG coming into the region, and, and, um, uh, and we've seen the startup of the Southern Corridor, and we've seen also Croatia LNG starting up. And I think this has created a much more diverse supply environment to an extent where I think that the security of supply concerns um, uh, have, have diminished. The second point, uh, very much linked with that, is that this diversity is, it will be improving in the next few years with the development of more uh, interconnectivity in the region. IGV will be starting, um, Alexandropoulos LNG is making good progress, and, and um, when that happens, of course, it, the, the amount of gas coming into Greece will be surplus to its requirements, and that will force more gas um, to go uh, through Greece to other markets. And then we have the prospect also of Romania becoming a, um, uh, a net exporter of gas um, uh, on, on the presumption, of course, that it will sanction um, the development of the, the, um, the net uh, prospect. All this will mean more diversity. That means that we can realistically see um, genuine market building in the region. In other words, gas trading, and then I, what I hope this session will develop then is, is something around um, hubs and pricing. What, what are the prospects for hubs? Um, what are the relevant hubs that will influence a, a Southeast Europe hub? Um, what does it mean for pricing correlations in, in, um, uh, in this region? How do the prices move um, uh, with, with respect to other hubs? And, and, and linked with that also, um, the issue of pricing convergence. To what extent can we see this region, um, the pricing in this region, beginning to converge, differentials narrow with other, um, with other uh, regional and neighboring hubs. Um, and I think, I hope there's been a lot of comment on, on those issues. I think the last, last point I want to make is on, on um, the energy transition. Um, and that we've already noted in some of the earlier sessions, comments around the policy tensions between Brussels and, um, and regions, Southeast Europe in this case. But I think we, we should just uh, stand back and perhaps recognize Greece's leading role in this process. In 2020, lignite consumption in Greece um, contracted dramatically by almost a half. Very big number, very big progress there. Um, a lot of that, um, that space was taken up by gas. And so despite the, the overall um, outlook in Europe for the uh, last year on, on for the gas market, um, gas demand in Greece actually grew by 10%. So I think we can, there's a genuine case for seeing Greece as a regional leader on, um, on the issue of, of, uh, of the ignite of, of moving towards, um, towards net zero. So, with those three things in mind, can I introduce, please, um, Gottfried Steiner, who is from um, the Austrian, uh, the Central Europe Gas Hub. Uh, so, Gottfried, you've observed, you've been involved in this region for many, many years. You've observed the changes. What does your crystal ball tell you is going to be happening in the next few years? Gottfried, please. Thank you, Julian. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and thank you for paving the discussions. I think you have already taken away most of the presentations with your three points. <laughs> now you're, going to give um, us the, you're going to give us the answer. <laughs> and thank you also to Iene and to Mr. Stambolis for inviting us to this conference. I think we have a long relationship and a long good relationship. And so we are very, very... Uh, happy and glad to be here and to support this conference and to give our view on 
uh, the gas trading outlook in Southeast Europe. And I would like to uh, start uh, with our market here in Austria um, and uh, with two of the figures which you see here in these slides. Um, the one is the virtual trading point, the tech virtual trading point since 2015. Um, where you see that we had a, a fantastic increase in terms of uh, nominated volumes on the Austrian hub over the past years. Considering the liquidity which we had at the start of the virtual trading point in 2013, um, we had, I would say, more than doubled the volume actually um, coming on the hub and traded at the hub. What you see here also is the so-called input volume. So we call this uh, the volume which is dedicated for the virtual trading point and, um, and trade it. The ratio between the trading volume and the input volume is the churn rate, uh, which was increasing constantly over time. Um, and uh, just now in, 2000, in, in 2021, we had a churn rate of uh, seven, six to, to seven, uh, which is a, a really a marvelous uh, figure in terms of our development. On the right hand, you see the development of the EX tech uh, market in Austria, so our exchange market, which we pr provide in terms of the spot market and the futures market. And uh, before touching point on those two ones, I would actually come to this in a more uh, greater detail. We are for sure still the benchmark hub in this region and also the benchmark trading place um, for Central and Eastern Europe. And we have looked uh, greatly at the uh, volumes at other hubs, asking you or uh, coming back to your question, Julian, about what other hubs will emerge in this region. And I think that this is not yet answered, first of all, and secondly, still an open point. And I would come to this uh, on the next slides. So in a bit more detail about the growth, which we having seen uh, in the past year, the one is um, the first 12 months or the first uh, the year 2020, we reached uh, 826 terawatt hours, which is a year to year growth of 10%. And on the X tech markets, we reached 1.2%. This is particular as actually uh, the hub was much more affected by the Ukraine Russian uh, conflict at the end of 2019 and the filling up of storages in this period then actually the impact of COVID-19 was. On the other hand, on the exchange side, which you see on the right-hand side, we had a small increase of about 1%, and that's certainly due to the, the, uh, the, the effects of, 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 of corona. This year looks different uh, in terms of nominated volumes to the virtual trading point. Year to year, we are down by 10%. Um, so this is the effect which I mentioned uh, with regards to the Russia-Ukraine uh, issue. And on the other hand, our exchange volumes were actually growing by 10% year to year, uh, which uh, is also nice and mostly I have to say due to the um, unexpected uh, weather which we experienced in the first five months here in Central Europe. To bring this into a bit of a more perspective, you see here, first of all, our Austrian market, which we operate. On the other hand, the, the Czech market, which we also operate, so it's the Czech exchange market. In spot, um, uh, in red is the spot market, in black is the futures market. And if you look at Austria, you see two, uh, uh, two um, things which are outstanding. The one is this big jump from 2016, 2017. Some of you know this already. We joined the Pegas platform, nowadays the EX platform, joining the uh, European offering of gas exchange trading. And even that we had a fantastic growth uh, in the years before, uh, from 2012 to 2013, in terms of the new market model, and afterwards um, in terms of the growth, but then joining this European offering, allowing traders the access to various markets and also to our markets various uh, via one platform um, and trading the spreads in spot and futures. Um, this was clearly a Kickstarter or a, a real booster for the market here. And the second effect is, which I, I mentioned at the beginning, 
is here from 2019 to 2020, the spot volumes actually dropped for the first time. Um, and that's due to the, the, the corona uh, effect that actually in the first month, um, the spot market was depressed compared uh, with the year before. 2021 looks very different, as I said, we are up by 10%, um, and this is working well. In terms of the black bar, that's the exchange traded volumes. I don't count here the outside trading, the OTC traded volumes, which is clearly uh, a magnitude above uh, the exchange traded volumes. On the right hand side, you see the volumes which are traded on our platform in the Czech Republic against spot and, uh, and futures. Uh, we migrated to the Pegas platform in 2018 and you see this big jump from 2017 to 2018. And since then we experienced a steady growth on this market. Although I have to say on a very small level, you see about the axis um, between the Czech Republic and Austria, we're here by a factor 10, I would say, uh, difference between uh, the Austrian and the Czech market. And despite of this marvelous growth, the overall market, even that the exchange is growing significantly, the overall market is not doing as nicely as we actually thought about. And that's actually a bit of a learning for the Central and Eastern European markets overall. What I have here is, uh, and this was also touched upon by Julian, is, is the, um, the regional differences. So the spot prices in various markets, uh, in the Italian market, in the Hungarian market, uh, our market in green and at the TTF. And what you see that there was a change coming by, the, by October 2020, I would say. First of all, it's just the period 2020 and 2021 illustrating this unbelievable growth um, of, first of all, the fall of gas prices and then the growth again. I mean, we have seen um, in the last couple of weeks, 28 euros per megawatt hours. A year ago, we had four euros. And what we did actually there was we introduced negative prices because the market asked us to introduce negative prices as there was a fear similar to the oil market, but on a different uh, different sector here, that the spot prices could fall below zero, which was um, actually unbelievable at this point in time. Uh, but anyways, we, we did this and we are ready to handle negative prices on the spot side. And since October, um, the spread relations flipped. So um, uh, you see here much diverse picture of the uh, spread relations between the different markets. Uh, this is uh, going into the, um, the in, uh, until May, June, I would even say, where the price and the location spreads between the different markets actually fell quite significantly. And finally, um, a picture which was perfectly explained by, by Julian, who is an absolute expert in this development for many, many years. Um, I've taken here an excellent graph out of um, uh, the publication um, um, of Platts from the 7th of January 2021. And in a way, this guest trading, we can talk about the volumes on different platforms in this region and on um, liquidity on different markets, but actually it depends a lot on um, exactly what was mentioned, the infrastructure, the market development, and the production of gas. And that's something uh, which has changed already uh, with TurkStream and the extension of TurkStreams um, to up to Hungary by the fourth quarter or end of third quarter this, this, this year, uh, by the finalization of Brewer, uh, by TAP um, coming on stream, and um, this nice uh, red box which is 17 is the Neptun gas discovery. I think this is the one and most important which is missing in this puzzle for uh, Eastern Europe, how gas trading will continue in the future. Um, whether or not uh, this Neptun gas discovery uh, will develop, I think will make a big difference in the development of the different markets and in the uh, emergence of further gas trading. 
Um, so far, there were really good attempts in Bulgaria. Uh, there were good attempts in Romania. Hungary has a well-established uh, spots market. Uh, but in terms of overall liquidity, in terms of pre prerequisites, uh, the Central and Eastern European markets here uh, still lag behind, uh, not even speaking about um, the, the region Slovenia and, and Croatia. So it's all about this gas discovery. And then once it's there and once those expectations are fulfilled, I think the Romanian market uh, would be the one which is um, uh, located best based on the experience which we had uh, so far uh, to become an important pricing point, an important trading point in this region, despite the fact that the Russian volumes are actually uh, going around it via Serbia to, to Hungary. That's in a way our expectations, but happy to have more discussions about this uh, in the Q&A session. So thank you. Um, thank you very much for your attention and I'm uh, looking forward for the discussions with you. Gottfried, thank you very much indeed. So um, eyes on, on Romania. And I think it's an intriguing point though that um, but it's actually uh, with TurkStream, in a way, it's it, Moscow has been has been driving interconnectivity, perhaps a little bit faster than Brussels. Yes, <laughs> seems is, to be. Which is probably not quite what was intended, but but it seems to have happened. Thank you very much. Um, can I now introduce Mr. Gerasimos? Avionitis, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, ENF for inviting us here. I'm Gerasimus Avionitis. I'm representing DESFA. Uh, I'm a market development manager in DESFA, and I also represent DESFA in the uh, board of directors uh, of the Hellenic Energy Exchange. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, excellent introduction and for touching upon the issues, the, 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 the right issues. Uh, and another comment is that uh, listening to Gottfried's presentation is really uh, where we are, we like to go soon and see these figures and all these uh, achievements in the last 15 years of the Central European Gas Hub. Uh, anyway, what we are going to talk today about is the development of a wholesale market in Greece. It's a long process that has taken quite a lot of effort and time. Uh, I think we are uh, reaching a, a critical uh, point uh, right now. So I would like to, to give you a view of, uh, of the developments here. So uh, since my colleague um, uh, before Mr. Panagiotis Panousos in another session explained exactly who DESFA is and what we do. We are the uh, Hellenic uh, transmission system operator. Um, we are ownership and bundle operator. We are offering regulated and non-regulated services. And we have um, as our shareholders, some of the top uh, European TSOs and also to top, European, top uh, Greek company. So I will not spend too much time on, on, on this kind of uh, info. You can find it, in, I guess, in the presentation that will be distributed. Um, in this map here, I would like only to stress, uh, to, to, to point out the four points of entry and exit of gas in the system, because this is a fundamental aspect for developing a gas hub. So we have interconnections with Turkey, interconnection with Bulgaria. Actually, interconnection with Bulgaria is fully, we have a full um, firm capacity reverse flow, which is heavily used uh, 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 since it's established in 2018. Um, we have the entry point of the LNG terminal. As you pointed out, this has been an entry not only of uh, diverse supplies, but indeed of competition itself for the region. And last but not least, since the 1st of, no, of, of January of 2021, we have an interconnection with a trans-Adriatic pipeline, which is fully operational. This point is also bidirectional uh, as a backhaul flow, I mean, uh, uh, in an intermittent basis, but still it established a long shot connection with a developed market, which is Italy. And we are uh, expecting a lot to, uh, to see 
um, uh, from this front. Vespa has, uh, as I said, has dedicated a lot of time and effort since practically 2015 in developing a real physical and commercial hub. We believe that uh, the key aspects of this hub, as Gottfried very rightly pointed out, is an infrastructure that is able to receive and further distribute gas anywhere that is required and it will be required by price signals. So the second step is to have uh, um, a price discovery mechanism, which is reliable and transparent. Uh, and finally, this all should be based on a very solid ground of, of uh, regulatory uh, uh, certainty and, regulatory and, and market design, market features. So to this end, uh, Desfa is, Desfa is working on developing um, interconnection capacity, increasing the interconnection capacity of its system, increasing the interoperability of its system uh, by making having interconnection agreements with all involved operators, all uh, neighboring operators. Eventually, increase system capacity and flexibility by um, developing new compression stations new reverse flow uh, capabilities in the interconnection points. And as we said, last but not least, we are developing the trading infrastructure and a gas exchange in cooperation with the Hellenic Energy Exchange in which we are shareholders. Uh, just to show you on the, the, the idea, as I said, of all these uh, projects, actually you can see on your left-hand side the projects we are uh, constructing at the moment, we're developing at the moment. Our participations in other infrastructure like the FSRU in Alexandrupolis and the Hellenic Energy Exchange I just mentioned. On the right hand side, you can see other developers that they are connecting to our system, like the IGB, the Trans Adriatic Pipeline, which is already completed, the future FSRU in the south of the Orga Gas developed by Motor Oil, and eventually, uh, the underground gas storage for which we are in the same, uh, we have ex expressed our interest in this in the relevant tender. The idea is to develop a system that can take gas from anywhere, move gas anywhere uh, through reverse flows, etc. And all this to be driven by reliable price signals. So uh, the first step really in establishing a reliable and transparent marketplace was uh, in the 1st of July 2018 um, by the with the establishment of a virtual trading point and a market-based balancing regime, which allowed for the first time to have a short-time price uh, uh, discovery and, and development. On your left-hand side, you can see the development of trade volumes over the counter. The, the trade volumes are the virtual trading point um, at, some, at certain points, we have uh, reached um, a turn ratio, as Gorfried developed. Uh, the turn ratio in general is between 0 0.7 to 1. We have a long way to go compared to the, our colleagues in Central European Gas Hub, which is around 10 times more. But still, we have seen uh, a significant growth in the volumes that are traded at the virtual trading point. And also, we start to see a big increase now with the develop with the uh, start of operation of TAP in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, however, this is also, as I said, this is the first step. It shows a healthy uh, market, but still uh, a market that has still uh, a lot to grow and develop. And our next step is the development of a spot gas market uh, developed by Desfa and Henex. In fact, we have been working for the last uh, couple of years. Now we believe that uh, um, uh, by mid-October, we'll have um, a gas exchange, a trading platform, uh, offering uh, spot products for the time being. We are designed to have within day and day ahead products uh, from one to two days um, forward. Um, the trading mechanism will be auctions and continuous. It will be a combination. 
And also, there is going to be pre-registered OTC trades to be allowed and be in, in, included in the trading mechanism, practically in the clearing mechanism. Uh, there will be full clearing and settlement services offered by the uh, subsidiary of the Hellenic Energy Exchange, the NX Clear, which will act as a central counterparty to all transactions. Uh, the entities that will be allowed to trade will be all VESFA uh, um, users, VESFA system users that will have a, a relevant access to, to trading. This can be uh, uh, from since 2018, of course, they can be physical traders also involved in, in some physical transactions, but also they can be paper traders doing only um, uh, arbitrage trades, etc. Last but not least, and most importantly, I would say uh, uh, from the beginning of this um, um, of the trading platform, the trading on the on the exchange, uh, we are going to be to have uh, spot indices within day and day head spot in index, and also the balancing gas uh, marginal prices, so that we can uh, see really um, uh, uh, prices developing. Uh, a word that I would like to say, I don't have a slide for that, but we have experienced uh, in the last uh, uh, three, four years at least, uh, very much the, the convergence of the prices in Greece as they are uh, prices that they are uh, aggregate prices on a monthly basis, of course, that are uh, gathered and published by the regulator to have a, a very, very good correlation and actually a matching with that. Uh, the respective TTF prices. So uh, because of the LNG, I think that they really flooded the, the Greek market in the last couple of years, we have a very good convergence that uh, probably it can move through our interconnections and through this platform to further upstream to the other uh, uh, countries in the region. That was a very short uh, presentation of the developments. Thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, excellent. Thank you very much. And I think that builds extremely nicely on, on St. Gottfried's um, presentation just before you. So I, I think those two things in combination are, have been a terrific introduction to uh, and commentary and uh, perspective on, um, on, on what's happening. Um, let me move now to um, Stefan Kuzo from, um, from Turkey. From, um, who's going to talk to us, uh, I hope, about, you know, how, how all this is looking from an Istanbul perspective. Um, are, are you watching these developments in um, the kind of mature, mature hub that we, we that Godfrey was talking about, the, the developing um, uh, marketization of, of Greece and, and hub, hub development potentially there? Are you watching these things closely? We'll start yeah, thank you. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mustafa Güzel. Uh, first, I would like to thank you for inviting our company to this to this valuable event. Uh, yeah, uh, we try to uh, uh, follow the uh, developments in Europe. Uh, in my presentation, I will mention very briefly about natural gas infrastructure in Turkey, and then uh, I will speak about organized market and its structure, and uh, I will give some statistics as well. Lastly, I will tell about some developments in Turkey gas market. Uh, natural gas pipeline system uh, is a huge network with a length of 16,000 kilometers and nine compressor stations. In this net network, uh, natural gas cons consumption is 50 uh, billion cubic meter uh, per year and a minimum of uh, 100 and a maximum of 280 million cubic meters of natural gas per day. Uh, it has an input capacity of uh, 340 million cubic meters uh, per day, and this capacity is planned to exceed 500 million cubic meters per day. 
Uh, in this slide, uh, you can see the export quantities. As you can see, exports are made from many countries by both uh, via pipeline and LNG. And there is a breakdown in the graph here. Uh, this is the effect of cheap LNG prices. So there is a quantity change uh, at uh, pipeline and, and, and LNG supplies. Uh, in the Turkish gas market structure, uh, shippers can book capacity at uh, Botaş, uh, which is a transmission system operator, uh, electronic uh, bulletin board, uh, bulletin table on uh, an annual and monthly basis. Uh, in the coming period, uh, it is expected that the daily capacity will be av available. Uh, shippers make nominations in Botash electronic bulletin table on a daily basis. Distribution companies send metering data to Botash electronic bulletin table again, and allocation is made here. As an alternative, commercial transactions are carried out on APH platform. Imbalance and trucks transaction margins are managed in APH platform. Imbalance and transaction collaterals and receivables and debts information are uh, sent to Takas Bank and payments are made at Takas Bank. I want to say something about the establishment of the organized natural uh, gas wholesale market in uh, market in line with Turkey Turkey's objective of becoming natural gas center. Market operation rules were published by EMRA and organized natural gas market has been operational since 1st September 2018 and is operated uh, by APH. This market design let the market players trade anonymously in an organized liberal market operated under continuous, continuous trade, trade principles. Uh, Participating in the, con the continuous trading platform is completely voluntary for shippers. A contract must also be signed with APH in order to participate in a continuous trading platform. There is a 54-hour trade window for a gas day. A contract opens at 8 o'clock before the gas day and closes at uh, 4 o'clock after the gas day. Gas day. Daily reference price is uh, the weighted average of the day ahead and intraday contracts. Balancing gas prices and daily reference price are published in APH transparency platform. Additionally, it allows the transmission system operator to balance the system via continuous trade platform. The transmission system, op system operator enter the system to balance the network. In this slide, you can see the continuous trading uh, platform. And this is a sample uh, uh, for our interface. In addition to daily contracts, uh, you can see the weekly contracts with longer delivery options. There are two days, five days, and seven days products for weekly contracts. And I saw, uh, and also we have collateral mechanism. Uh, there are three kinds of collaterals, one for transactions. If you want to buy on the spot market, you have to pay in advance. If you sell, you don't pay collateral unless there is an imbalance. Second, we ask collateral for value-added tax. And third, we ask collateral for imbalances. I would like to give some statics statistics about APH gas platform. There are currently uh, 51 participants in our market. There are around 30,000 matching since the market put in operational and 4.5 billion cubic meter gas traded, which is equivalent to 48 terawatt hour. Trade volume is approximately 900 million euros. The daily uh, match amount is about 6 million cubic meters, and the share of this amount in consumption is around 3%. 3%. Here, uh, 
Here we see the spot gas prices in Europe, America, and Turkey. Here um, in America, gas prices are completely independent uh, from Europe. I will not comment on this subject. You can interpret it better than me. Uh, there is a difference between European prices and Turkish prices. This difference is due to the long-term contracts in Turkey, which is oil-based. The price difference here and the expiring contracts can be seen as an opportunity for potential traders. Long-term contracts, which are the big biggest obstacle to the liberal gas market, expire significantly in the coming years. There will be important develop developments in the Turkish gas market in the coming years. Potash, a state-owned company, will unbundle its transmission and commercial activities. There will be two or more companies. Interconnection agreements are planned uh, with Greece and Bulgaria and might be with Georgia. Sales policies will change in Turkish gas market. Currently, gas consumers are in the supplier's portfolio. Distribution companies and power plants will be market player for price formation on the demand side. About the gas future market, uh, as I said before, we are operating natural gas spot market in uh, market since September 2018. The shippers can trade with daily and weekly products in our spot market. We are working on establishing new, new market, which will provide, provide our participants uh, to trade for forthcoming months, quarters, and years. This market will increase the product variety in Turkish gas market and will provide particip participants to manage their risks by fixing their selling price or purchase price months before the real time. The output of futures market will be daily indicator price for different contracts. That will increase the predictability of the market. The market is planned to be put in operational in October this year. The futures market is an important step for increasing competition and price discovery and provide hedging opportunities. Uh, my presentation is uh, finished. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Uh, many thanks. Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of questions on on some of the, um, I think, fairly provocative things that you've uh, you've suggested. But before we do that, let's let's hear the last presentation, um, uh, which is Effie Milioni from uh, El Pedison, Greece. Um, Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. The the um, we're all yours to hear. Great. Uh, first of all, I will try to. I will. Uh, I want to thank you for this invitation. I'm really happy and proud to be a part of this panel. Uh, my name is F. Mioni. I am the market analysis and back office extra manager in Edison, and I will try to provide a power producer's view in gas trading in Southeast Europe. So, uh, let's have a quick uh, view on the production mix of Southeast. These are all data I could find from transparency platform of NSOE. We can see that coal and lignite still have a very dominant role in the region and uh, countries have announced very ambitious policies for uh, uh, decarbonization and uh, the penetration of renewables and we also have a very high carbon price at the moment so there are strong indications that uh, there is room for an increase of gas to power generation in the region if we look at the same graph but for greece we can see that the transformation here has already happened uh, Lignite has already lost its dominant position uh, to natural gas. And actually, so far in 2021, it seems that uh, the number one producer is renewables. Uh, these are data until April. Uh, as you may know, uh, gas gener uh, power generation from gas accounts to more than 50% of the gas demand of Greece. So anything that happens in the electricity system also influences a lot the gas system. And it is very difficult for power producers to plan their consumption, not only in the long term, but also in the short term. Uh, on this graph, you may see the forecast we have available uh, for wind generation in Greece. Uh, these are four days ahead, but even in six hours ahead, 
you can see that there is highly, uh, it's very highly, there is highly uncertainty. Uh, so it's very difficult for power producers, as I said before, uh, to plan even in the day ahead and even intraday their consumption. So we hear a lot that uh, in the future system, we will need gas units uh, so, that, so that they can provide reliability and flexibility to the system. Uh, this is not a far future scenario. This is something that in Greece, we witness already daily. I, I have prepared a graph with the average deviations uh, on its directions uh, versus uh, the day ahead forecast performed by Avignon and what has actually happened in reality. And uh, with green, you can see all the days that uh, gas units had to produce more than the schedule, and with blue, all the days that they had to produce less. So, so far in 2021, on an average, uh, they have gas units have to produce uh, less by 4,500 megawatt hours electrical, uh, which is the double than what it was uh, three years ago. And this is mainly because we have uh, more renewables. And maybe it doesn't sound like a very big number, uh, but these are the average uh, numbers. So we have days with much more higher deviations. So let's take an example. Let's uh, see an example of a day like that. Uh, this is uh, April the 1st, just a weekday, just a normal Thursday. Uh, but the demand for the forecast for the demand was not very accurate. The actual demand was 10% more. And on top of that, we had slightly less renewable production in the country. So Avni asked the gas units to step in and uh, fill this gap. Uh, so the gas units uh, produced 20% more than what it was forecasted, what it was scheduled. So what has happened in the gas system? Uh, we had an intraday increase of uh, uh, regasification from Revithusa. Uh, this bought from the balancing platform about 20,000 megawatt hours, and we had a slight increase of the export intraday decrease of the export of the exports to Bulgaria. And let's look at another day. It's exactly the opposite. It's Easter Sunday this year. Uh, it's traditionally the day with the lowest demand in the power sector, but this year it was not demand the problem. Wind was uh, wind produced a lot, a lot more more than 40% more than the forecast. Uh, so gas units had to step down and lower the production. And let's see how the gas system in Greece handled this uh, imbalance. So we had uh, a decrease of regasification in Revithusa uh, of uh, 12,500 megawatt hours. Uh, this was sold to the balancing platform, uh, something like 24,000 megawatt hours. And we had an intraday increase of exports to Bulgaria of almost 19,000 megawatt hours. I think that this day is a very good example of the opportunities that lie in cross-border, in cross-sector balancing, and it really shows the value of flexibility. But if power producers didn't, or the, their suppliers didn't have uh, LNG at Revithusa or access to the Bulgarian market, then they would have been exposed to imbalances. So these are some key notes regarding the current landscape uh, in Greece. Uh, we expect the natural gas trading platform to be operational, as Mr. Avlamiti said, by the end of the year. Uh, the problem is that at the beginning, we will only have uh, short-term products, which are very useful, but they are not enough. We also need long-term products also for the price signaling. Right now, participants in Greece and across the Southeast are mainly relied, rely, mainly rely on bilateral contracts, uh, which are pretty, uh, most of them now are indexed to TDF. Uh, of course, the last years, uh, the origin of the gas in Greece has changed a lot. Many of uh, other speakers today have said that uh, we have uh, new volumes of LNG, which is uh, uh, which provided a great diversification of sourcing and good pricing. We have new volumes from TAP. Uh, we have many ga new gas infrastructure preparing and planning in the region. Uh, right now, the main provider of intraday flexibility is Revithusa. If there is no LNG there, then uh, flexibility options for the gas system uh, are quite limited. We do not have a gas storage. Uh, a gas storage would have help would help a lot uh, to manage uh, changes in uh, prices or to better handle the supply and, of course, intraday imbalances. Uh, there are still some barriers in cross-border trading, and uh, of course, we have the different scheduling timelines between power and NZ, which is, I know it's not a huge problem, but it causes a lot of day-to-day -day problems. But please allow me to go a bit again back to the electricity markets, where we see a lot of advancements in the last years. Uh, we have the coupling of the, the, the coupling of the day ahead markets is a reality. 
almost across all Europe. Uh, we expect also to join the continuous intraday markets. Uh, TSOs are participating in uh, a lot of projects regarding the, uh, the coupling of the balancing. Across the regions, many countries, we have Albania, Montenegro, North Macedonia, which are preparing day ahead markets. Uh, Turkey launched uh, some days ago uh, a power future derivative markets. And we do not see such advancements uh, in the gas markets. And I think another really interesting point is that uh, in the power derivatives market, whether it is EEX or the Greek power exchange, we have an increase in liquidity. And for power producers, this is a great opportunity to hedge their production as long as they can also hedge their gas costs. So what can a power producer do to efficiently manage their portfolio and to trade in this region? First of all, uh, they have to diversify their portfolio. Uh, they should not only aim at low prices, they should also aim to flexibility. Uh, this is where opportunities will lie in the future, and this will become increasingly uh, evident as renewables uh, participate more and more in the production mix. And I have to, stre to stress really <laughs> out that uh, there has to be a very good uh, collaboration between the power department and the gas department within a company. Uh, there has to be a very good flow of, of information and uh, a good understanding of how it's, uh, its market uh, works and how they interact with each other because uh, the market dynamics are a bit different in the two sectors. And uh, last but not least, and this applies for all energy companies and not only for power producers, uh, I think that companies should invest more for information tools, uh, for data analysis, for forecasting and uh, operations. Energy markets are becoming increasingly complex and without the appropriate tools, it's not easy to operate in them efficiently. So thank you very much for your time. I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, that's, that's very kind. Um, we have got uh, um, a little bit of time here. So um, I, would, uh, I would like to each, uh, ask each of you an extremely quick question, which, which will only take you 10 seconds each to answer. And I'm going to start with Mr. Avionitis, um, if I can. And I was, I, was, um, I was very interested in your remarks about possibly seeing reverse flows through TAP. And I wondered if you had in mind um, Greece, to, Greece to Turkey or Italy to Greece or even Italy to Turkey. I wonder if you've got a very quick comment to say what what was in your mind when you when you um, when you mentioned that. Well, just a quick answer. Actually, I just uh, uh, referred to the possibilities that the proper regulatory framework and proper uh, infrastructure provides for trading. I think Ms. Miglione made uh, a point really where. Uh, by having this situation in the interconnection with Bulgaria that was only realized a couple of years ago, the full possibility of reverse flow, then uh, in all cases you could trade, you could get rid of uh, excess gas or you could prob probably import more gas. Um, so I was referring to the possibilities given. Yes, everything is possible, provided that also the upstream and downstream uh, regulatory frameworks are uh, uh, are compatible. So uh, uh, everything is possible if regulatory framework and the infrastructure is there. I was just referring to the possibilities and Ms. Milione just confirmed that there are possibilities of cross-border trade and balancing uh, in the region. Yeah. Sure, sure. I mean, with Alexandropoulos LNG, um, it, it, is, it is obvious you're going to have to do something with that volume. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yes, it can go north, it can east, it, it could go west, um, it could also go east, but um, in, interesting. Um, yeah. a, a question for, for Mustafa, um, please. You, um, you mentioned in your, in your sort of what, what's going on next, future development. Um, you, 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 you implied you could see the end of long-term contracts in Turkey. That, that's right, is it? You, could, you can see them either becoming so flexible that they don't really, they're not really a long-term contract. They might have a long-term date of them, but they could, be, there could be so much flexibility in the contract 
that they're they're not really a long term contract. Is that what do you, what do you what do you think there? But of course, you've got one you've got one that's in negotiation at the moment. The um, the Shaq Denise one contract is could that be a test for this? Do you think? Yeah. Uh... Uh, our long-term contracts with uh, Russia and uh, Azerbaijan, uh, this year I think uh, there is a quantity that will be uh, uh, and uh, so and uh, we made another contract with Azerbaijan via TANAP uh, project, uh, but uh, according to that, uh, that uh, we, we think that uh, the long-term contracts is a big obstacle uh, for the liberal market. So uh, I think uh, they uh, they will not uh, resign uh, the contracts. Uh, maybe uh, the pro- produ- pro- production country, uh, countries uh, maybe uh, incompetent uh, in our market, I think. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, Gottfried, uh, you've observed hub development um, uh, obviously for a long time and from your own perspective. Where would you think Greece is at the moment compared with your experience? In, you know, on a, on a kind of time scale of of development, where would you where would you sort of put Greece um, on your uh, on your your own development? I think Greece is at an excellent starting point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, and and that's something which um, um, the one is, um, and you have seen this by the presentation. It's about the professionalism and the dedication and I think Julian based on your experience in the past year you know exactly what I mean is about the dedication of developing such a market and the professionalism of the stakeholders involved Um, and I think that's something what you can see here to having a a holistic picture on it to look at uh, the contribution of infrastructure to develop the exchange to develop the market to develop the the rules and to have a sound regulatory basis and this was all mentioned in this presentation and as far as we can observe from the outside i think this is done uh, with a lot of dedication Um, there's the ramp up of of tap with the volumes coming in the question is how much of um, this volume is then actually contributing locally. That's also one of the key questions which you see about the extension of Turkish Stream to Bulgaria in particular. Coming back to your comment at the beginning um, um, that uh, the Russian pipeline was actually quicker than the European pipeline in this region. Um, but the question is then what is the impact into um, market development, market liquidity, and those things. And I think that's also one of the uh, open questions with regard to the uh, Greek market next to the availability of gas production. I think that's one of the key issues. Otherwise, in terms of diversification of LNG supply, of connection, uh, and about how you develop this uh, market, um, that's all on a, on a good path. Also, the, the consumption even small, but I think, um, as mentioned before, is is developing greatly. Um, uh, Where on the timescale, I think think you're still at the beginning in terms of developing a market, in terms of the balancing platform available and the exchange coming later this year uh, for the spots market so far. I think this this is a a, a realistic perspective and also a a very realistic a uh, plan which was drawn here. Okay, thank you. Um, lastly, a quick one for for Etty. I mean, you you're observing the markets. Were you surprised at uh, the um, the volume being exported to Bulgaria? Did that surprise you, or did you expect it? Actually, it's um, uh, it's something that ha- has happened the last years. Uh, yeah. Some years ago, we wouldn't have expected it. It, so it was a surprise. But there it is. Um, it suddenly, it suddenly happened. Yes, but and the it, were not trivial. 
Yes, indeed. And but uh, uh, I think that there are opportunities there also for exporting, but also for importing intraday. And uh, I think that we will observe more and more volatility in the uh, uh, gas generation sector. So uh, I think that we will see even more uh, things like that in the future. Okay. okay. Well, with that, um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, um, for that session. Um, personally, I found it really interesting. So, uh, so many thanks um, from me. Um, I'm sure many thanks also from Costis because I think that was that was terrific. Um, so with that, I think I think we'll close. Um, uh, I know the whole program is running late, um, so I think um, I think if we close now, that will be be good for moving on to the next session. So thank you again, all of you. <laughs>